Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our very first video on our On Topic channel. Today we're going to be talking about female relationships and how to build your inner circle. We hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to our On Topic channel. We are so excited that you're with us. If you like the content that you are watching, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Also, my Instagram handle is going to show up right here. Feel free to follow me on Insta. Today we're going to be talking about female relationships and how to form your inner circle. I'll start off by saying that what I'm sharing is really coming from life experiences. I don't have everything figured out, but what I do hope is that you would be challenged and encouraged as we talk about how to form your ride or dies, aka your inner circle. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the heck an inner circle is, why you need an inner circle, and how to form it and in that la very last section of how we're going to talk about some challenges and some reflections um, and possibly some hurdles that is keeping you from having close female friends i have been so incredibly fortunate to say that i have an incredible group of uh, women who form my inner circle you know just what is an inner circle an inner circle is your ride or die they are your friends that you're going to call when you are having a deep theological crisis. They're your friends that you're gonna call when you need marriage advice because marriage got gets really hard or parenting advice or do these jeans make me look big advice. I actually never call friends about jeans because I really don't like to wear them. But if I did call friends about jeans, my ride or dies would be the friends I call about jeans. These are gonna be your friends that, you know, you're gonna end up taking family vacations with. These are your ride or dies your inner circles so that is what an inner circle is and some of the some some of the guidelines that I have formed for my inner circle and this doesn't have to be for yours but there are certain things that I have for that almost like a criteria for forming my inner circle and one of them is if you didn't know I am a Christian and so when I form my inner circle, the women that I live the closest to are women who share the same faith because at the end of the day, I know that they're going to be giving me biblical advice and they're going to be correcting me and encouraging me and challenging me from a biblical standpoint. Does this mean that I don't have close friends who aren't Christians? No, that doesn't mean that at all. It just means that when I am having some serious issues with doubting my call and what God has created me to do I don't believe that it would be fair to my friend who doesn't know Jesus or share the same faith to be unloading this on them versus talking to my friend who does share the same faith and can give me scripture and kind of help me kind of reground myself another criteria that I have for my inner circle is I only have women in my inner circle um, my husband is in my inner circle, but I feel like, duh, of course he is. But when it comes to my inner circle, my ride or dies of female friends, they're only women. Because when you are sharing the deepest parts of your heart and the things that you're going through, just for me as a married woman, I don't believe that it's wise to share that with a man because I think that things can get a little gray and murky there. So I share with my girlfriends and um, that those are kind of the two things that have really helped me form my inner circle and help me um, build that community of close girlfriends. And I'm I like I really want to <laughs> let's be real I really want to take some time to talk about just the inner circle and why you need to form female relationships like a strong community of people who are going to support you and love you and be there for you because when I say that they're going to do all these things for you I feel like it should be stated that you should be willing to do those things for them that if you're expecting someone to help bear the burdens of your life you better buckle up and be ready to bear the burdens of their life and I'm not saying you need 60 really great inner circle friends I think that's almost impossible I'm saying you need one you need that one friend that is going to bear the weight of life with you. You need that one friend that is willing to see you in the crappiest version of yourself and get you to a place where you are the best version of yourself. 
And I think that it's really hard to form female relationships and in a day and in an age where we have been raised to be so incredibly competitive with each other, that we are not raised to see other women as companions, but we're raised to see them as competition. That if another woman's beauty and intelligence and gifts and contributions exist, then it takes away from yours, but it really doesn't. Another woman's beauty and gifts and talents and contribution and whatever it is just means that there's more in the world. And when I meet a woman that I am intimidated by or I feel threatened by or I feel like she's my competition, oh, those are the women that I am intentionally seeking for a close relationship because there's something about them that will cause me to grow. So this one of the perfect examples would be um, I preached at our church a couple months ago and after the service, this incredibly well put together woman comes up to me and she was so nice and she said I would love to have coffee with you and um, we set that up and in my mind while she was talking to me I was thinking wow this woman is like beautiful like stunning and she's so articulate and she seems very intelligent wow like oh man and I went out to coffee with her and then it turns out that she works for a dream company that I would only honestly a dream company that I would love to work for if I didn't work for a church and then I did some social media stalking because you know before you have coffee with someone you should probably know if they're a murderer or not right anyways I did some social media stalking and it turned out she's a beauty queen and so I come in with like all this knowledge about who she is and I'm kind I'm intimidated and I don't I don't know if I necessarily viewed her as competition but I was intimidating we'll call this woman beauty queen because she actually is a beauty queen and the more time that I spent with her the more I'm like oh man I want to just be around you more because I feel like you would make me a better person and that is my third criteria for my what I would build my inner circle on is is this person going to make me better and can I make them better can I encourage them and push them and challenge them can they encourage and push me and challenge me and I would say like I look at this woman beauty queen and I think I mean I don't want you to be a competition I don't want us to have a competition I want us to have companionship I want us to co-labor together I want us to walk side by side together and I would say that this is a similar trend with a lot of my inner circle friends is that initial state of, oh my goodness, like an insecurity that rises up in me about how incredible these women are. And now that I've lived life with them and I get to know their hearts and I get to know more about who they are, I just think I am so incredibly fortunate. I'm so incredibly blessed that I get to live life with these incredible world changers. How would I word this? Why do you need to be careful about who you allow in your inner circle? This is where it's going to get good if nothing else was good before this. But you need to be careful about who you invite into that, the, really the deepest layers of who you are because who you are is the best thing that you have to give to somebody. Who you are is valuable. Who you are is worth it and worthwhile. And not everyone is privy to it. And I think that when we live in a world of social media where so much of us is out there for the world, you need to know that who you are is beautiful and it is worth it and you should be wise. Because it is heartbreaking when you have a friendship and it goes sideways for whatever reason. You mourn that friendship because you've lived life together. And so can I just encourage you, regardless of how old you are, how young you are, what season of life you're in, can I just tell you that you are the best thing that you can give to somebody, your heart, your passion, your gifts, your laughter, your tears. That is an immense gift. So be wise, especially young people, be wise. You don't need 600 friends. You need one really great one. And now let's talk about how. How do I form my inner circle? You know, earlier I talked about the three critiques that I have for my inner circle. I think women share the same faith and really 
ch- a dual challenge. Do I ch- can I challenge them? Can they challenge me to be better? And this is the part where we talk about some challenges because I understand that, that not everyone has a close circle of friends and if you do for the love, appreciate them, invest into them, pray for them, cry with them, laugh with them, be there for them. And if you don't, I really hope that you'll leave this video with some really practical tools on how to begin to form it. First, I would say realistic expectations. Um, like, I, I don't even feel like I need to go that much into it, but really realistic expectations will really help you navigate how to have female relationships. Do you have unrealistic expectations when it comes to friendships? The next question I'm going to ask you is, are you the reason you don't have close friendships? And that's going to sting a little for the people who probably know maybe they are the reason. And I'm not saying this to attack you or to shame you. That's not my heart at all. And I hope you know that. But I ask that because the majority of the women that I've ever spent time with who complain about not having close friendships are women who expect more than they're willing to give, but they're also women who tend to naturally give in to the idea that women are your competition. That if someone is more beautiful than you, then you can't celebrate them. If someone is more intelligent than you, then you can't celebrate them. And can I just say that's such an exhausting way to live? To think that people are your competition, to think that they are the reason that your life is not happy, like blaming people is not helping anybody. So are you the reason? And if you are, can I just encourage you to spend some time in reflection? Spend some time wondering, you know, do I view women as competition and not companions? Do I have unrealistic expectations? Am I the reason I don't have close relationships? And again, you don't need 60, you just need one. And one, I'm going to, I'm actually going to finish this video out with one of my favorite Bible stories ever. And I believe that it is really one of the best, um, really representations of what I believe a friendship should be. It's a story of Moses and Aaron. And so Moses, Aaron, and the priest, they climb up to the top of the mountain and, um, God tells Moses, if you raise out your staff over the battle down below, you know, your people are going to win. And it says that Moses stood on the mountain all day long, (laughs) holding a staff out so that the people would win. But he began to grow weary. I mean, I can't even hold a piece of paper out for like 20 minutes. Here's Moses holding a staff out. The man had endurance. But he begins to grow weary and his, his arms begin to lower. And as they lower, his people begin to lose the battle. And so what happens is that Aaron comes alongside him or came alongside him and they held up his arms while he held up the staff. And I believe that the staff represents the calling. It represents whatever God's asked you to do in this season of your life. So they held his arms as he held the calling. He held the staff. And I believe that's what friendship is. Friendship is knowing someone's call, encouraging them in their call, and holding them up when they don't have the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual strength to continue the call. So I always tell people to my inner circle, I'm like, I'll be your Aaron. I will hold you up. I will be your right-hand man. I will encourage you and challenge you and be your strength when you don't have any more. And I've been so blessed to have people say, on, I'll be your Aaron. I will hold you up when life gets really hard and you forget why you have done all the things that you have done. And in this season of my life, it is a lot of my friends being Aaron's to me. And that is friendship. That is the inner circle. That is why you need to have it. Because it's really easy to forget And your inner circle is going to be the friends that remind you of it. I hope that you're challenged by this video. I hope that this was relevant to you. And I hope that in this next season of your life, 
it will be the time where you will find that one close ride or die, that close friend who is going to begin to form the inner circle with you. Thank you so much for watching On Topic. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit subscribe and the bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram. My handle is going to be across the screen. And have a great day.